All righty. Thanks everyone for still being here. Sorry, one second. a little bit better great cool so we have the pleasure of keeping keeping you here for another like 30 or 40 minutes we'll try to make it quick and good um this is jason and i'm td we've been working on um integrating tiger beetle into central ledger we've got we are two of a team of about six folks um and so shout out to the to the rest of the team that's joining us remotely um so so our goal is to build a specialized database right that takes care of some of the sort of financial accounting specifics that might happen in the application layer, put those data into the database and see where they can get some really good gains, right? So we had a bit of a demo that we showcased in, in January. And so we want to talk to you a little bit about what we've done over the last three months and what we would like to achieve by June, July. So let's go. I'll give an update on what we've done, what we wanted to do and where we are now. Um, we'll look at the architecture of a hub and exactly where the solution that we're thinking and talking about sort of impacts or fits in. Um, Jason will go into the components and talk quite a lot about how they interact with central ledger as it is. And then if we still have time and energy, we'll talk a little bit about um, how to migrate or how to onboard Tiger Beach into an existing, into an existing environment. Cool, so our key objectives were to complete the implementation and testing of fully integrating Tiger Beach into, into the central ledger. Um, we also wanted to complete um, some design docs that we could either, um, well, not either, but that would be a good way for us to document what the solution is, um, but also a good sort of talking point about whether we approach it in a way that makes sense, whether there's some things that we want to change. And so some input and review from the community on those docs will be really wonderful. And then in terms of what we've actually done, we started working or we put together a baseline of the chart of accounts, and that really just says, well, if we're thinking about what it takes to implement um, implement a module loop hub, what are some baseline sort of account definitions that you could begin with? How would these be impacted by, for example, creating or adding a participant, um, getting some liquidity into that, that participant's account? How are those accounts um, impacted as they draw down, as settlement happens? And so defining a baseline of, excuse me, of a chart of accounts, that is, of course, um, configurable or, or can be different, right, depending on what a particular schema requires. Uh, so we've put that documentation together and we, that draft is complete and really, we're really keen to socialize and, and get some reviews and feedback, some comments on that and see whether we should be thinking of things a little bit differently. And then there's a solution design document, which um, is about 80% complete. So we're not where we want it to be by the end of the, by the end of this, this past PI, but we are you know, four fifths of the way. So not, not too far off. From a development point of view, we're about three quarters of the way done. So we've got um, three components or three sort of deliverables, um, deliverables that we've been working on. Um, there is a Tiger Beetle client for speaking to module node. And then there is an interface that would be what is implemented within the central ledger. And then we have a test suite that is really great for testing performance, Tiger Beetle specific performance, but can also be used in other parts of the system. That's, that's about 95% complete. We actually just want to get the sort of user manual or documentation for that ready. So we're there at their block. So this picture, uh, we're in the, in the right environment for me using it and just showing it over here, but it'll be a little bit familiar, I feel like. Um, what we wanted to show, let's see, can point. Okay, maybe not. But what we wanted to show is sort of towards the center, there's a little shaded area. Um, that's where the, you know, the integration of the solution that we're working on, that's where that fits in. Um, part of the central services, central ledger, and the database um, sort of interaction between central services and, and the database. That's where we're proposing to, to impact with the solution. And so from a design point of view, we still have the module loop adapter communicating with central services, central ledger in this case via Kafka core, but we're now introducing this interface that will be really central ledger's interface to Tiger Beetle. And of course, on the Tiger Beetle cluster side, we'll have the client sit sitting over there, and that's a, that's a node client. Um, so what we propose to do is still have all of, the, all of the data reside or end up in the SQL databases, but the flow, the flow of the transaction will be impacted a little bit differently. So everything that needs to end up in the database will be sent there asynchronously. But from an account and a transfer's point of view, that'll be in the critical path for, for affecting a transaction or for handling a transaction. 
Um, and then we'll still continue to have the system use you know, its, its current caching um, with Redis. Okay, so that about covers it. I will hand it over to you, Jason, to take us into the components. Also do the standing thing. There we go. Thank you, CD. Uh, thank you for joining us for the Tiger, Tiger Beetle update. For those of you who don't know Tiger Beetle, Tiger Beetle is a financial accounting database designed for mission critical safety and performance to power the future of financial services. In our P17 convening, we demonstrated the integration of central ledger in Tiger Beetle with regards to safety and performance. Today, we will be going into more detail on how and where this integration is made possible. We will start with the Tiger Beetle client, low level to high level. Sorry, let me just move my notes a bit here. Tiger Beetle clients. <clears throat> the NIG the ZIC native client performs the integration with Tiger Beetle cluster. The ZIC client will be integrated into any of the required platforms, such as Node.js, Go, Java, c -sharp, et cetera. Since ZIG is very C-friendly and can actually be used as a C and C++ compiler to the most popular targeted platforms, it makes sense to harness the power of C, in the, power, the C power of ZIG to ease integrations. This means that the mapping, testing, complexity, and effort for each programming language is greatly reduced for the Tiger Beetle clients. Essentially, only a mapping is required between the Tiger Beetle ZIG native client and platform specific client, such as Node.js in central ledger example. We will be going into detail later with the Tiger Beetle client implemented in Node.js, also referred to as Tiger Beetle Node. The Tiger Beetle clients already implemented, in, uh, the Tiger Beetle clients that's already in, implemented include uh, are already implemented in ZIG, Go, and Node.js. Here we go. So the snippet on the left, uh, you might need to squint your eyes a bit. The snippet on the left is where the Node API header is being imported in the ZIG code. The snippet on the right is where the Tiger Beetle client types meet the Node API. Focusing on the snippet on the left, the Node API is now integrated into ZIG via the C import function which parses C code and imports the functions, types, variables, and compatible macro definitions. C include function then appends the node API to the temporary buffer in ZIG. Looking at the image on the right, node.zig references C.zig. Declaring the C constant variable allows access to the required node API functions. So that will be the, the top arrow over there. The last line, on the right snippet creates an instance of the Tiger Beetle client. So that will be at the very bottom uh, of the slide. The code in between is all Tiger Beetle specific in order to communicate with the message bus and state machine. Okay, okay so this, in this integration concludes the low level integration for Tiger Beetle and Node.js. Okay. Okay, so you know, the first line might be a bit uh, Clear. As part of the Tiger Beetle node build process, the code in the previous slide will be compiled and the output binary placed in the dist client.node location. From the top, arrow number one, the build colon zig node.js script shown here from the package.json is where the zig code is compiled to create the client.node binary for the Tiger Beetle node integration. So looking at uh, arrow number two, the index.typescript. Um, we can see that the TypeScript code is importing the client.node module where the integration is being created between Tiger Beetle and Node.js. Okay, so then on the right, arrow number three, we can see the create transfers TypeScript function exposed to create transfers in Tiger Beetle. Then further down at arrow number four, we can see the client.node binding being invoked to create the transfer. The full integration in Node.js is less than 900 lines of code. Keeping in mind, this is the, the client code only, which is awesome. Okay, so, yeah. All right, so now that we have a background info on how Tiger Beetle clients integrate with the Tiger Beetle cluster, we will go into a bit more detail of, the, of how the integration works within Central Ledger. So this, uh, the first step is the 
the existing central ledger configuration is updated to support integration with Tiger Beetle through the central ledger configuration file. So this is a file that will be very familiar to, to everyone. The second bit is since Tiger Beetle and central ledger make use of different data storage mechanisms and models, it is important to know that to note what data is being stored and referenced in Tiger Beetle versus central ledger. The second part of the data itself is how and when the data is transported to Tiger Beetle from Central Ledger. Lastly, we will be going into detail of how exactly Tiger Beetle is being integrated into Central Ledger through the Tiger Beetle interface in Central Ledger. The in-depth look will cover the account and transfer creation process. Okay, so this is a, uh, the section that's being added in the default adjacent configuration file. So the existing default adjacent central ledger configuration file has a new section that's called Tiger Beetle, where all the Tiger Beetle related configurations for central ledger will be located and configured. So it's important to note that the Tiger Beetle has its own configurations that needs to be configured with the Tiger Beetle cluster. Okay, moving on to the data mappings. The table we see here shows the matching fields between Tiger Beetle and central ledger, as well as a brief description of each field. Fields listed on the left is specific to accounts in Tiger Beetle. Important fields for Tiger Beetle include user data, which is used to link account data from central ledger, from the central ledger database with the accounts stored in Tiger Beetle. A single user data field value may reference multiple accounts in Tiger Beetle. The ledger field matches the ledger account ID from central ledger, while the code field is linked to the currency ID in, in central ledger. The flags for accounts are Tiger Beetle specific and used to manage account specific properties and functionalities such as the credit and debit limits allowed for each account, the linked flag, which is used to link a batch of accounts as part of a chain, which then allows the creation of a set of accounts to succeed or fail together. The last set of fields refer to the credit, credit and debit balances in Tiger Beetle for an account, both the prepare as well as the full balance is stored in Tiger Beetle. Okay, moving on to the transfer data mapping. Okay, so the table here lists all of the fields supported by Tiger Beetle for a transfer. Transfers in Tiger Beetle are immutable, unlike accounts. The payer and payee is required to represent a single transfer since Tiger Beetle, Tiger Beetle's financial domain is double entry T accounts. User data is used to link the transfer data from the central ledger database with the transfer stored in Tiger Beetle. The timeout is only applicable with two phase transfers, which in turn is managed by the, Tiger, the, by the transfer flags. The flags for transfers are used to manage transfer specific properties and functionality, such as the linked flag again, to link a batch of transfers as part of a chain that will uh, that, that, that allows the creation of a set of transfers to succeed or fail together. The pending flag is there to mark a transa transaction uh, to be a two-phase transfer. In the case of central ledger, a prepare and a fulfill. The final uh, post pending or void pending flags are used to commit or fulfill a transfer or roll back a transfer. Okay, so <clears throat> now, that we've, now that we have a background on the clients and data, data models, we can look at the protocol translation library to cover central ledger and Tiger Beetle behavior. The Tiger Beetle.js interface is used to map the central ledger data models with the Tiger Beetle data, data models for accounts and transfers. Tiger Beetle only stores the necessary data related to accounts and transfers. Data such as ILP packet and transfer extensions are not stored in the Tiger Beetle data set. Some of the main functions include creating of an account, looking up of an account or accounts, uh, doing transfer, trans, transfer prepares, transfer fulfills, uh, and last, last but not least, rolling back a transfer. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how some of these functions are utilized in central ledger. Hope. Okay, so this is a, a high level view of all of the uh, yeah, all of the sequence diagrams to follow are, by, are taken from the solution design documents for central ledger and Tiger Beetle integration. We will be focusing on the Tiger Beetle in integrations with each of the uh, sequences. It is important to know that the above sequences or the following sequences are not showing the integration 
from the Kafka, Kafka, Kafka consumer, which will be ut utilized in the real world scenario. Instead, a JMeter REST endpoint in order to measure performance from the central ledger handlers. The area we will focus on are steps five to eight for the next slide, which is basically the blue block that we see over here. Um, all right. Okay, so going into zooming into, into the create participant, starting from step five. The database transaction is initiated to store the participant and count data in the, the tables that we, that we already know, which is like the particip participant, participant currency, and participant position. The Tiger Beetle client is invoked to create the participant account, basically the TB create account function, which has ties to the central ledger participant tables. At step number six, uh, the account create request is received by Tiger Beetle by the Tiger Beetle cluster, which the account is created and distributed to all Tiger Beetle nodes in the cluster via VSR, the view stamp replication. Only errors for the batched account creation is returned. And in this case, there were no errors. Okay, so moving on to the step 10, the database transaction is regarded as successful and the database transaction is committed. So at this point, we've got both systems in sync. Participant data is only committed once successfully created in both Tiger Beetle and Tiger uh, and Central Ledger. Um, duplicated account data is ignored in Tiger Beetle. Okay, then from accounts to two phase transfers. So this is the high level transfer prepare. The sequence listed, uh, the sequence here uh, is to prepare a transfer. The area we will focus on, on are steps five to 17. Okay. Starting from step five, the, the following validations are performed prior to the transfer. This is existing validations that's always been available in Central Ledger, validating, validating the participant names, both for payer and payee, validating account positions, uh, validating the amounts, validating the conditions and expiration, and validating that the payer is not the payee. Okay, then moving on to step number six where lookup is performed for payer and payee participant data in Redis by name, position, account type, and currency. If, if the participant data is not available in Redis, a database lookup is performed followed by the participant data being cached, uh, cached to Redis. And step number seven, we are invoking, uh, invokes the Tiger Beetle, Tiger Beetle prepare transfer via the Tiger Beetle Node.js client. In steps eight and nine, the transfer is dis distributed the Tiger Beetle state machine. The transfer is di distributed to all nodes in the cluster. The Tiger Beetle then responds with the result and the result is returned all the way back uh, to the DF DFSP via the API. Asynchronously then, the, the, the inserts for the central ledger is, uh, is made, which will include the transfer for the duplicate check table. Um, it is important to know that uh, there is no need when using Tiger Beetle to perform the duplicate checks since Tiger Beetle has the duplicate check built in. So it only needs to you know, worry about that later. So following the duplicate check is then followed by the usual uh, table record insert, which includes the transfer, the transfer, transfer participant tables, the ILP packets, the state changes and position changes, as well as the optional transfer extensions. Okay, and then lastly, the, the central ledger transaction is then committed. Okay, so next we follow up the prepare with fulfill, and high level again, we will be following steps five to 16. Okay, starting from step five, a new database transaction is initiated for the fulfill. The current open settlement window is, data is obtained for the current settlement window with an open state. The Tiger Beetle client is invoked with a, with a transfer with post pending transfer equals two property, which is basically committing the, uh, the two phase tra transfer or rather the fulfilling the, uh, uh, the transfer. This will result in the transfer being fulfilled. The same replication process applies for the fulfillment transfer than it did for the prepare. The Tiger Beetle client, I, uh, client API responds with the result of the fulfilled transfer. Um, and then lastly, the central ledger data is populated for the transfer fulfillment and transfer state change. And then the database transaction is committed again and the, the result returned to the DFSP via the REST API. 
All right, so now that we have, we have created accounts and storage and stored transfers against those accounts, we can perform lookups on accounts and transfers. The area we will focus on here are steps five to eight. So keeping with the trend, starting from step five, the Tiger Beetle client is invoked with a transfer ID. However, it is also possible to perform range queries with currencies, ledgers, central ledger accounts based on user data. So that, that's something that will be available in June. Once Tiger Beetle transfers are fetched, the balance of the requested data will be fetched from the central ledger database. Okay, so this, this basically concludes Tiger Beetle and central ledger uh, integration. The final section uh, I'm covering today is the data migration process for populating Tiger Beetle data with existing central ledger participant and transfer related data. So existing central ledger customers will be able to mirror and onboard all necessary central ledger data through migration scripts. Data migration to Tiger Beetle process includes a sanity check and summary of account and transfer data to be migrated as a part of a pre-check script. Migration, there will be a migration script of all account related data required for Tiger Beetle from central ledger database. And then the migration script of all transfer related data. Post migration, a verification script is provided to match uh, accounts between Tiger Beetle and central ledger and to match transfers between Tiger Beetle and central ledger. Thank you for listening. Over to you, Tilly. Thanks, Jason. So where do we go from here? We want to wrap up the conversations or actually firstly ask for some reviews and input um, with those chart of accounts with the design docs. Um, we look forward to implementing integrating Tiger Beetle into central settlement, implementing rich queries and being able to showcase those in June, July, and um, then um, submitting the JMeter, so the performance test suite into the repo as well reusable for all other testing. And then of course, being able to showcase the, this, this bit of work in our next convening. So that is, that is it from us. Are there any questions? Would you like to ask them? Great, let's please chat. Thank you. Sorry, just by show of hands, how many have questions? Just so I would, or, wow. Um, I'll go Miller, quickly please, so please. I can hand it off. Yeah. So I, I'll leave mine to five questions then. Is that right? <laughs> can you go to slide 19? Thank you. Uh, so I'm noting a couple places here where there are asynchronous requests, and I wanted to understand this that uh, there is a join somewhere, yes? Uh, so you make these asynchronous requests, and at some point you have to join the answers, right? So that, that's right. Yeah. So we, the, the idea is to do the final commit only once both systems are in sync so that you don't have stale data because obviously doing the async, when you respond to a client to say the transfer has been successful, you need to ensure- It needs to actually be successful. It needs to yes. actually be successful, so yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. So I just wanted to clarify that one point. Um, then the second thing that uh, would be helpful, the second of my last two questions, sorry. <laughs> uh, you mentioned in the documentation, you have the chart of accounts and the, and the T accounts. Uh, is that available in your repository or is it available in the Mojo Loop repository? Where do we find it? Uh, we would love, we will be sharing that with the with everyone very shortly. Uh, we've only had it in uh, a quality repository because we're just internally working on it, but it'll become uh, available for everyone very soon. I think our accounting wonks, uh, Michael, Warren, uh, myself, some others will no, probably want to have a look. No, I already uh, told uh, Michael, uh, yes, he's tagged. I <laughs> say, so, yes, uh, it'll be great having as much input as possible. And uh, yeah. And I would say also the implementers, uh, you know, would want to want to have a look at that too, so we can get you some early feedback. I suspect that it won't make much difference to the core integration, but it would to our understanding of how the system was applied and used. So I would encourage people to have an early look at that as soon as it's available, to yes. be sure they understand how the system actually functions as an accounting tool and a store of data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you. I better stop there. Yes. Thank you, Miller. Um, what other question? Uh, can I give it there first? Hi. Uh, so my question is, uh, is the data in Tiger Beetle a replica of data in the central ledger already? 
So it's not everything. There's uh, the data that Tiger Beetle ca cares about is mirror, but uh, the data set or the models for Tiger Beetle is a lot more streamlined and, and, and specific for what Tiger Beetle does. So it doesn't include things like the ILP packet and the transfer extensions that you would have in Central Ledger, but there are keys stored in Tiger Beetle that references all of the data in Central Ledger. Okay, so in a way the accounting data is replicated then? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Tiger team. Always a pleasure. Tiger team, that's the name of the team that does Tiger Beetle. Um, uh, I have a few, I'll just probably stick to one and I can follow you guys up later. I'm not understanding, my, my understanding was that the, the, all the hot transactions are in Tiger Beetle and then all the cold storage is in the central ledger database. But it looks here that we're not really getting any performance speed up because you're still talking to both MySQL and Tiger Beetle kind of in the same flow. Am I, am I missing something there? No, that's, that's, that's uh, actually very true. So uh, yeah, uh, in short, we are basically exploring getting a point where you can eventually getting a, a, the data between Central Ledger and Tiger Beetle where you only need to store data in Tiger Beetle where it's necessary and not having to store data in Central Ledger. And once we've reached that point, then that statement will be absolutely two, and you will you will you will have that thing. You you, will, uh, you, you only need to have the uh, the data in one place essentially. But we we're not we're not there yet. Although because of the, the asynchronous process, you the hot path having the accounting data in Tiger Beetle means that that data is now safe. And today, if uh, uh, keeping in mind that we're eighty percent done, we haven't finished that that last bit. Uh, if something terrible would have happened, uh, and let's say your database would completely fall over, uh, and the rollback couldn't take place, you would need to reconcile at some point between Tiger Beetle and uh, your central ledger database. But worst case is you would have lost your extensions, your transfers of extensions. So yes, we, we still need to close so, that final gap. So it's kind of like one way to think of it is there's extra metadata that lives in their central ledger database yes. that Tiger Beetle doesn't capture. Okay. Yes, that's right. Yes. And who do you who do you recover from? Like who who, who do you trust more? Uh, Tiger Beetle, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna very that was a question. <laughs> I see your one's listening, so that was more of a question for him. So that could prov provoke a reaction. <laughs> um, thank you. Okay. Awesome. Um, yes. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know whether Mojaru can run without integration with Tiger Beetle. So if yes, uh, so what, um, how does um, Mojaru now handle the accounting entries? Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, so, uh, so. Can Mojaru run without oh, integration yes, to yes. uh, Tiger Beetle? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. So the, the idea for Tiger Beetle is just to enhance a central ledger and all the central services even further, but you absolutely you can run without Tiger Beetle. Okay. Which is that was done today. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, this uh, integration between uh, the uh, Moja Loop Central Ledger and Tiger Beetle is essentially uh, a copy of database of Central Ledger stored in Tiger Beetle, right? The thing is like, how uh, will it handle any uh, disaster, a scenario whereby uh, Tiger Beetle has uh, an, an account balance, which is different from what that then there is in MySQL or Central Ledger. One question was this, and the other question was that Tiger Beetle protocol I saw is on TCP IP, whereas uh, Moja loop in itself is completely on APIs. So uh, uh, the Tiger Beetle uh, client or the node of Tiger, Tiger Beetle essentially would have to, uh, at, at the end, will need to communicate on TCP IP. My understanding is this. Is, is this correct? 
So at the point, uh, so all of the, the workings between the central edge database and uh, Target Beetle are behind the API. So the, the integration is still, would still be an API. Uh, if I answered your second question correctly, and the first one is that uh, the rollback would need to be uh, occurring in uh, central ledger. So in other words, if you're, uh, firstly, Target Beetle would start, store a transfer, and if by some reason the data couldn't be stored in SQL, it, you can, both, in both systems, you'll be able to do a rollback. So you can either roll back Tiger Beetle, the a prepare, or even a, a, a full transfer. And the same with SQL, it's just where you would, do, where you would be doing a rollback, yes. Uh, but, and, and regarding the, you know, uh, Tom asked a question, which I think Joran would be very suited to answer. So, which I think will you know, finish answering first part of your question. Does that answer some of your question? The question was around the protocol uh, in which Tiger Beetle will communicate to the a system outside of it, like uh, as the Tiger Beetle is only the ledger, uh, an accounting system, right? It communicates on the interface of TCP IP I saw on the Tiger Beetle documentation. That was the context, like, uh, because you have defined a TCP IP based protocol where there's a header and then there, there's an event and then you send data and it commits. So this integration in itself in central ledger would be done on TCP IP protocol or would, would there be a, an a SDK of Tiger Beetle in uh, like incorporated inside central ledger? Oh yes, it would be TCP IP, yes. And it's, uh, yeah, it's so, uh, yes. So I'm going to let Joran answer uh, Tom's question and then you explain I think the, the state machine and the way it works in a, better than I would be able to. Uh, Yuran, you're online. You want to? Oh, you can only type. Yes. Okay. So maybe we can, we can take it offline. Yes. I just had um, a quick one, which is, what is the data store for Tiger Beetle? So that's uh, yeah, the one that I that Yuran is definitely much better at, at uh, answering. But it's basically an LSM tree, but uh, the term that we that we coined is an LSM forest is going to be the data store. And now all of that works exactly is, I'll let uh, you want to explain this. Okay, thank you. Sorry, am I right in thinking that there's documentation that covers Tom's question on the Tiger Beetle repository? As I recall. Oh, you are? You're online. No, I do. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, yeah, so I can un answer some questions as well, if, if you can hear me. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so last in, first out, um, Tiger Beetle's uh, storage engine. Uh, so Tiger Beetle is a deterministic uh, distributed database. Um, something really important to Tiger Beetle is the safety. Uh, so storage faults. Um, a lot of the research around storage faults was, was yeah, I think it'd be really taking off uh, 2018, um, which means that the storage engines developed before 2018 don't address these um, fault models. Um, so we've developed our own storage engine for Tiger Beetle. It's an LSM tree. It's fully deterministic. Uh, it can be fuzz tested um, autonomously using new testing techniques. Um, so we can get it to a very high level of, of quality very quickly, uh, reproduce bugs instantly, replay them from a seed, um, test all the invariants um, exhaustively across the whole state space. Um, so that's the storage engine. That's that's why we we didn't use something like MySQL because MySQL doesn't have the same degree of fault tolerance um, for these new storage faults, um, doesn't have the same cryptographic checks, checksums, or it doesn't have a distributed recovery for, uh, as a cluster. Um, so, um, so that's Tiger Beetle. That's why I'm actually in Cape Town. I would have loved to be there in Arusha, uh, but I'm busy 
we, we are the team are, are busy finishing up our storage engine, which we we're about to plug into Target Beetle. It's coming together really nicely. We'll, we'll actually be doing a, um, a presentation this Friday at Jamie Brandon's new database conference. It's called, Have You Tried Rubbing a Database on It? Um, so this Friday, and we'll be talking about Target Beetle's new deterministic storage engine. Oh, I, I think the, uh, only, the only case uh, would be like- What, what question, any, anything else that we can uh, answer? Like Jason, see this? For a particular purpose. So maybe when they make that selection, you know, is this for an individual? So whatever, if they say- There's more information about how the question communication says, works with the leader. Uh, the leader nodes of Target Beetle explaining how, can we, how, how Yes. Data is transmitted to all of the nodes and how leaders are elected. I think uh, you'll know, be able to explain that a lot I mean, an individual account. One of the earlier the previous no Okay, sure. So if I understand the question correctly, it's um, how do we keep data safe? How do we replicate it across the cluster? And how do we keep the cluster highly available if the leader crashes? Is, is that right? Yes, that sounds right. Okay. Um, so... Let me just quickly check here. Okay, yeah. So, and, and just to double check, you can hear me fine. Uh, my audio is coming through to you guys, that's right? Yes. Okay, great, okay. Yeah, so how do we replicate data across the cluster? So okay. one of the things that we found, one of the reasons why we wanted to do Target Beetle, it's, it's been a year and nine months since we started. So from the very first line of code to, to here, um, the, the thing is that if you have a database for financial data, the concerns are very different. You've got a different level of compliance. You've got um, different level of fault tolerance that you require, reliability, or data is extremely valuable. If you lose a database row, you're actually not just losing a database row, yeah. you're losing the it's asset the, yeah, that it represents. So it, it, the financial data is critical. Um, so, which means that we can't just take a single node database. A lot of the open source databases are fantastic, um, but they they run on a single machine, and it's not okay to do backups. Uh, just you know, have a have a primary with a backup as a as a manual failover. There's too many ways that that can go wrong, and um, it's not not really acceptable these days for financial no, systems to have manual failover, things. just because you can you can actually really yeah. damage the data. It's, it's too difficult for a human to intervene, and the system can be offline. Um, yeah, so I mean, you need I to have automated uh, failover of these systems. They have to be highly reliable, highly available, um, much more so than just a, a single standalone open source database. So it needs to be replicated. And you have to have this high availability. So how does Target Beetle yeah. do that? Uh, we use the original consensus protocol. Uh, it was developed a year before Paxos at MIT by Barbara Liskov, who won the Turing Award, um, together with Brian Oakey. Um, and it's called ViewStamp Replication. Uh, it's, the, it's, it's a little bit more optimal than Raft. If you know the Raft consensus protocol, Raft is actually no, ViewStamp I mean, Replication, I mean, just with a different name. Device. And it's, um, uh, it's got a few tweaks to make Raft more accessible in the paper. But from an engineering point of view, ViewStamp Replication is much more optimal. So you can think of it as um, a, a transfer comes into Mojoloop, goes into Tiger Beetle. Um, we're gonna put it onto one hard disk and then we're not going to say to Mojilip, okay, we've got it, we've got this. Um, and the reason we can't say we've got this is because that hard disk could fail. So we can't act back to Mojilip, back to the, the um, um, you know, one of the participants until we've got it on more than one hard disk. And it can't just be RAID because the whole server could fail. You know, we could lose the survey in the in the data center. So we've got to get it to another data center onto another hard disk. Um, so we're going to put it on one hard disk, on another hard disk, and once only once that's done, then we're going to say, okay, we got this. Uh, so that's that's two disks, and that's pretty optimal. You couldn't make that more optimal um, because I mean that's the guarantee we need. We need at least you know two two different DCs in in the cloud. We call it availability zones, um, and once you've got that, then you. you probably safe. Uh, and then after that, for durability, you can let the replication yeah, continue. Mean, some of this is TV, uh, but before we act to the client, we need at least two hard disks. Um, and the way you do that is with a consensus protocol. So you stamp replication, 
does exactly that as just as optimally. There's nothing more optimal yeah, than that. that. Um, but the nice thing with VSTAN preplication is that when your primary fails, it also gives you an algorithm that is correct to fail over. Um, there's two ways to do it. The first is as a human operator, you can try and execute the, the algorithm manually, which is incredibly hard to get right at 2 a.m. when the pager goes off. Um, and, and there's a lot of war stories where that fails. Um, the second option is you put the time in up front, you have your algorithm, you automate it. It's much safer. When the systems fail, you have the failover happen within a few milliseconds. Um, so it's very highly available. Um, and I hope that answers the question. In line, you get a quote and it will say, this is going to cost you X, and then you accept it and you do the payment and it comes through. I think we'll have one final one. Let's see a hand. Oh, go for it. I'll give you the last one. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Um, Karen, thank you. You're obviously going to yeah. be familiar with RAC. That's something that I know. Okay. RAC, that's something I know about. Can you contrast the, um, the solutions between what you're talking about, protocol, the hacking, the multiple spindles, et cetera? Um, can you, just off the top of your head, I'm not a, what's your contrast? What's the, what's the pitch for, um, for a tiger bead all over RAC? Forget about general purpose, just for general ledger. What, what's what's the pitch over somebody using an Oracle Rack instance? Uh, so to be honest, I'm not I'm not actually familiar with it. Um, I'm quite new to the payment space. Um, I've I've been in it for for two to three years. Could you explain what what Rack does? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I, um, mean, I think what we'll probably have no. To have that's okay. That makes no. Uh, I thought that's the same space. So it's, it's a commercial well, product that's been general purpose database out there for us. I thought you had oh, okay. questions. Yeah. It's, it's problem space. Yeah. Thank you, though. Oh, Cheers. It's free. I can, I can try and answer just to say why why we did Tiger Beetle as a new database. Um, we're going to put in a URL and the wallet's going to happen to be in Europe. Um, okay. Yeah. I was really just the question was prompted uh, by exactly what you were describing across so bindle across like right dc uh, phase um, like point uh, uh, recovery uh, all yeah. those sorts of things and the That's particular the protocol the consensus protocol i thought you know, have a contrast. okay sure sure okay, so the, thank you the, the 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 extra ingredient for tiger beetle is it's those two things i mentioned the extra ingredient is financial primitives accounting double entry um so that's the language of tiger beetle uh, and 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 you're getting all three of them in Tiger Beetle. You're getting a uh, you're getting something that is meant for tracking financial transactions, and it can do that. There's a lot of ledgers that do it, but they're not distributed or they're not highly available. So and and now you're getting three in one out of the box, and it's open source. Um, so that that's the dream, you know, to, to power merge loop, make make these systems cost so cost they efficient. Would actually have a wallet with us. Maybe open source is the really cool thing. Thank um, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks to you. So we put in the back end for a lot of the PM in this case, if it was Europe. Um, so we're in the process of great. Um, a hand of applause for the coil team and.